your girl comedian Erica Duchess, and we're live on Edgewood. And today we're trying to see what's happening. And I got my girl here today. Could you tell us what's your name, where you from, and what brings you out here today? What's up, y'all? I'm Sunny. I'm from Milledgeville, Georgia, and I came out to hear D1 on this podcast. Oh, yes. and that's what's happening. Yo, we are live on Edge with It's your boy New Face with your Hip Hop History Minute. Today's facts. Did you know that Snoop Dogg, you know, Death Row, West Coast, you just seen him at the Olympics, got his first job in Detroit out of McDonald's on Six Mile doing what? Cooking eggs, man. They said they called the man Young Eggs, man. And also, the other fact, 50 Cent's 21 questions. Listen to the song. It was actually 23 questions. But today's guest, New Orleans' own D1. Couple hip hop facts about this guy, cause New Face was there. J50 Wheezy was the first song of his that went viral, got the attention of Ground Hustle's Jason Jeter. Under Jason Jeter's management, got bigger shows. And the first show that I went to Masquerade featured D1, featured Cy Hatter Prince, Dom Kennedy, and Compton's own Kendrick Lamar. And guess what? New Face was there. I got the flyer. We're gonna put the flyer right here, right under here. But also, do you go this far back with today's guest, D1? D1, shout out to D1. We are live on Edgewood. It's your, oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be right there. All right. Yo, we are live on Edgewood. Back to you, Scott. Girl, keep your head up. Yeah. Live on Edgewood. Make some noise, make some noise, make some noise, make some noise. All right, man, it's going down today. I'm so happy about this episode, man. I got one of my player partners coming through. Before we get into all that, man, first of all, can y'all make some noise for my co-host, Erica Duchess, man? What's up? It's gonna be a super great show. One time for my sponsors, man, Naya and Dutch Masters. Look, I'm excited to announce this young brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My dog, my yes. nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he got millions of views on YouTube. Yeah. Not only is he a rapper, I, 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 I rock with him because we have similarities because he does a lot of things outside of just doing music, feel me? He's also one of the first rappers in Louisiana history to be appointed the, of the governor. He was appointed by Governor John Bell Edwards to the, to the Louisiana Council for Success of Black Men and Boys. Oh, I didn't know that. He also okay. is one of the 2023 Nasir Jones Hip Hop Fellows at Harvard University. Okay. He has designed and he's teaching his own course at Tufts University oh. called The Intersection of Hip Hop and Social Change. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, can y'all put y'all hands together and make some noise for my dog, D1. What's yeah. up? Yeah. Noise one more time for you. Wow. Man, I'm so excited to have you here, dog. Thank you, bro. I, I know, know you've been traveling, right? Yeah, I definitely been traveling, man. Um, work calls, man. Jackson, Mississippi, New Orleans, Baltimore, Indianapolis, and that's just in the past week. Wow. Yeah. You just left Jackson, right? Just left, bro. Had literally. to come out here. Literally. So this time yesterday, I was on stage at a huge conference about uh, financial literacy and understanding your purpose in life. And I was the keynote speaker for the youth portion. And then I had to do a concert as well and perform. Man, this is crazy, dog. Yes. It's crazy to me. See, I, I know that, like, for you, it's natural progression. It's very, very natural. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I've also had a chance to see, like, you come up. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Like, you, I, I could just feel even now, like, your confidence, just how you... You see what I'm saying? You yeah. saying what you saying, like yeah. you understand the different and you understand the rise when, when it was time to rise up to the occasion. I could tell, Scotty, I could tell that where I'm at, like almost it either caught you off guard or it really impressed you. Cause when we was texting one day, I could just tell that you was like, boy, 
I remember when it wasn't like this now, D. And like, oh. I'm looking, I remember you telling okay, me. Okay, do you wow. remember the last time I saw you was at the YouTube event? At the YouTube event. You wasn't even there where you at now. You wasn't even, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't even that then. That was, and that was it. That was like. That wasn't even a year ago. I'm telling you. Shh. Make some noise, man. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're going we gonna, to we gonna talk about it a little bit, man, today. And it's not just going to be all about that. I want to know. The man himself. Mm -hmm. I want to know where you come from, the struggle, the mindset, everything. So we're gonna get into it. You know what I mean? Let's do it. Um, I hope it bless. I hope it bless somebody that's watching this. It's gonna correct. definitely bless somebody. Yeah. It's gonna definitely. Yeah. That's that's the whole goal and mission of what I'm doing is that I told myself this morning, I, I just wanted one person to be inspired. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. By what we did today, and one person was touched, and one person was inspired. We did the job. Job yeah. well done. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. gonna happen, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But D1, I just, I love your energy too. I just want you to know I love your energy. I love your 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 aura. Just everything you bring is just like look at your smile, nigga. I'm gonna Aww. smile. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> See, I, I just want you to know that. It's contagious, you heard me? Yeah. We I, just talked about that earlier. For real? No cap. Wow. Man, look, bro, it's real. Energy energy is contagious. So good, bad, in the middle, it's all contagious. Right. So I'm like, man, if I'm finna if I'm finna have the ability to change the mood of this whole room, I want everybody happy, I want everybody smiling, I want everybody confident, I want everybody saying, dang, like God is great. You know what I mean? Yes, I'm gonna exactly. play my part to yes. do that. Come on, let's go, man. Yeah, let's ben go. Ben Franklin High School. Yes, sir. That's where you from? That, that's where I'm from. You did your Nardwar research. Come on, yeah. stop yeah. playing! <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ben Franklin High School, tell me about it. You what, you play basketball? I did. Star basketball player, you heard me. What position? Oh, ah, okay. yeah. So at first they had me at point guard, which was cool. First couple of years running the offense, but okay. junior year, coach let me get a, a shooting guard, and that's when I really went to another level, man. So, you was a shooter mm -hmm. like that? Oh yeah, what? I'm I'm left-handed too, so you know oh. left-handers. Yeah, them jump shots be crazy, bro. So I was like, I was like. I was like New Orleans Steph Curry, you heard me? No, nah, I promise you, bro. I For promise real? you, I, bro. What? Like, I, was they coming out to the game to come see you? Man, definitely. Especially when we had our 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 big rivalry games against like McMain, and when we played like the big schools, we played Edna Call, we played uh, O'Pare Walker for sure. Like, I was the first person in my high school history to make the uh, Orleans Parish All Star team. Then I made the Louisiana Junior Nationals team, so we competed nationally against. NBA players, dudes that made it to the NBA a few years later. So wow. I thought high school basketball was a premonition for like, oh, this is just the beginning, you know what I mean? Because right. at my school, like I said, I was, I was Steph Curry before Steph Curry. You know, at, at my school, people knew like, David, he that one. But when I got to college, I realized, man, this whole college is full of people that they was all that one, you know what I'm saying? Now, what college did you go to? I went to LSU. Okay, that's right. So that's, that's right. a D1 school. Mm. And so, you played ball in college, and it was and it was tougher. Man, I, yeah, I got cut, dog. Really? I got Dang. cut. I went to college to play college ball. College is no joke, G. Yeah. I so. played ball in college, and it was, we lost every game. Oh, oh my. And, and and this is coming from me playing. See, I went to Rita in high school out here. Mm. Feel me? Mm. Shout out to the east side, man. We go back oh, and forth about this. Rita. Yeah, so, okay. so so like Rita, like we were tough, bro. Like okay. we was like 25 and 3. Mm. I went to college, G, and we, I swear to God, we was 0 and 25. The what first, college you went to? Savannah State. I'm so Savannah. I I'm so I'm oh, oh, oh. and 25? Bro, I was so upset. I I never quit anything in my life. I quit the team. You I quit was the just team. I couldn't go out like that. I yeah. that's when I really was like getting in the streets. Yeah. I was like, this is over. Yeah. I went from hooping to like showing up to the game fresh with a cup in my hand and a blunt. You serious, bro? I swear on my mama. Oh yeah. See, I when I got cut from the team, I went from hooping to rapping. That's how I started rapping. Was like, man, basketball ain't work out. So what I'm finna do next? And somebody had some recording equipment in their dorm room. We all college students. And I was like, man, let me see what that's hitting for. So we start messing around on the microphone. And I was like, ooh, that same feeling I get when I lay a verse down or when I spit something. That's how I used to feel when I dropped 20, you know, on mm. the court. And I'm like, yeah, I like this feeling. So, mm. so I, became, I became addicted to the feeling of spitting something and seeing people react. 
You know what uh, I mean? Oh yeah. yeah, I know what you, I know what you're saying. Oh, that's mm. a feeling. Yeah. So so you you basically got your your rapping start in college. Yes, I so I started late. You know, a lot of people started. They be, I've been rapping since I was seven. Since yeah. I, yeah, I came out of my maroon. Nah, yeah. you know I'm from New Orleans where we looked up to the hot boys. So w the most we used to do was me and three of my friends. We each picked a hot boy. We was like, I'm gonna be him. I'm gonna be him. So I was BG. Okay. You know I, mean? I okay. was BG. Tall, BG. slim. You heard me? Yeah. Right. So I was BG back then, and all we used to do was rap their lyrics. But in terms of rapping our own lyrics, like, nah, man, we just, we wasn't even on that type of time. So wow. I started rapping late, though, when I got to college, and, and I, uh... You developed a, a fan base in college. In college, yeah. yeah, I did, I did. Anybody who went to LSU around that time, even all the basketball players, the football players, they knew, like, man, that dude with D1, he got something. And I remember when my boy Tyrus Thomas, he played in the NBA for... Several, several years. Right. He played for the Charlotte Bobcats yeah. and the um, Chicago Bulls. Yeah. I remember when he first came up to me in the quad where everybody used to chill, and he was quoting some of my lyrics, and I was like, ah, oh, this is crazy right oh, here. that's hard, so, though. So, you know, so that just was a good feeling, bro. And um, rapping on campus gave me the confidence to step off campus and step into South Baton Rouge, where Lil Boosie is from, mm -hmm. and go in the streets take my music there, go link up with Kevin Gates when I'm in college, and we collaborate and doing music, go over to Southern University, the other university, the HBCU, you know what I mean, and go rap. But I developed that confidence on LSU's campus. Wow. Wow. That's pretty dope, man. Yeah. That's dope. Hey, hey, make some noise one time for D1. Yeah. 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 So, so, it's like you got this um, leadership in you. Mm. What is, where does that come from? Is it like a thing from mom? Is it from dad? Is it from struggle? Like, what is that? What is that at night from? It's from my heavenly father, you heard me? It's, it's, it's from come God, on bro. Now. Okay. Straight up. Like, God turned me into a leader. He turned me into a spokesman. He turned me into an influencer. When I really was just a young dude trying to figure out how to fit in and be cool, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's all. Growing up, it was just like, man. Because I got embarrassed in fourth grade, bro. I wanted to be the president of the United States. And when I told my fourth grade teacher that in front of the whole class, I'm actually having a flashback as I see all these people in here. Wow. Like, she loud capped me in front of the whole class and was like, oh, you ain't smart enough to be president. You need to pick something else, you heard me? So when she told me that, and she wasn't joking. And that stuff, boy, that feeling when you see your friends laughing at you and when you see your friends like, oh, man, she just killed that boy in front of the class. Like, that made me just say, all I want to do moving forward is fit in so I don't have to feel embarrassed no more, right? Mm. So I was suffering from that for a long time. I had a light, you heard me, but I mastered the art of dimming my light mm. just to fit in. I never wanted to stand out. Even if it was in a good way, I was like, man, I just want to fit in and just be one of the fellas, you right. heard me? So really, bro, in college, going through a lot of stuff, like uh, getting cut from the basketball team. My old lady in college, we was together for like three years, went to the same school. She ended up cheating on me with a couple of football players. Yeah. Be quiet. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that yeah, oh, all of the football man. players. That um, my best friend back in New Orleans, he had got murdered. You heard me? And I found that news out freshman year, and it was things like this that really had me like, yo, I need something different. Cause basketball whoosh, got stripped from me. My old lady whoosh, got stole from me. My best friend. Whoosh, not even here on earth no more. And then my roommate in college, my dorm, literally the dude who I shared a dorm room with, he was the point guard in high school, I was the shooting guard, started selling dope out of our room, right? He right. did. So, right. I'm, so I fell out with him. So I was like, I need something else that ain't gonna switch up on me, that can't get murdered, mm. that can't just cheat on me. Like, I need something. And that's when, man, I got real, real, real serious about understanding who God is and understanding why God would even create the earth and then create these human beings and put us here and make each one of us different. And everything started to click to me. I'm a math, uh, I love math. Mm -hmm. So it just was mm -hmm. like a formula that was just making sense. Like, oh, this all adding up. And I get why we put here. So the leadership qualities just came about because I was like, man, I wasn't put here to fit in. I've been trying to fit in ever since fourth grade. Man, I was really put here to stand out. Yeah. But I'm not going to stand out if I try to be who Scotty ATL is or if I try to be who Erica Duchess is. I can only stand out and have that confidence by embracing all the nuances of what makes David, David, or what makes D1, D1, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And that's when I started to become a master of 
who am I? What are my special gifts? I like to call them your slingshots, you know? Okay. Since my name is David, I exactly. think about David and Goliath. Like, David defeated Goliath with a slingshot. I just got to find my slingshot. Right. My wow. slingshot is hip-hop, you heard me? Okay. So I figured out hip-hop and education. That's the two things that I'm a beast. When you put me on a microphone, on a stage, or in, a ability, in, in a position to be able to educate others. So I was like, if I use those gifts, I'm going to have the, the most serious impact that I could ever have in this world as long as I stick to what I'm good at. Jeez. And that's where the confidence comes from. That's Ooh, dope, man. Boy, that's, that's so dope. deep. Yeah. All right, so we're here, man, for Moldy Moments. I got my dog, D1, in here with me. It's going down. So tell me, dog, you in grills by Scotty right now. Yeah. Is this your, this your first grill, second grill, third grill? I still can't believe I'm about to get a grill, dog. So this is definitely my first. Oh, bro. Come on, man. Give me some, man. Yeah. My, my mind, only with Scotty, that's yeah, what I be doing. Because yeah. cause in New Orleans or Louisiana, like, grills is a thing. But in my family, they ain't playing that, you hear me? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a thing in the city, but in the Augustine household, boy, what? You got it out of your mouth, let me see. Right, right, right. Uh, it's, a, it's a holy grill. There you go, it's a holy grill. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on. Right. All right, so dig it. I'm only, what, what you have in mind, like, we want to do the top, the bottom, you want to put a design in, you want to say D1, like. Oh, man, I can't get too ignorant, you heard me? So I, <laughs> I'm like, I'm a, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a six piece, you heard me? And I'm gonna keep them all. I don't want mix and match, so I'm gonna go six piece up at the top, you heard me? Uh, like so, this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, so, so, yeah. Okay. Okay, Bill. I, I thought you were gonna say something like I want I want to do the Trinity or something. Oh, look at you. Okay. Yeah. So like, tell me, man, who's the first person you ever saw with a grill? Shoot, Birdman. Straight up. Oh yeah, Birdman. His he name was ignorant B3. when he his, joined. His name was B32 before it was Birdman. I ain't know that. B32 meant that's baby B with 32 goals in his mouth. Oh. Slugged up. B32, dog. Wow. Yo. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh man. yeah, you went from the water. I'm from the NO, yeah. yeah. They got I know they wearing them grills out there, man. I tried to get my boy Spitter to get a grill. He still ain't want to get no grill, man. For real? Nah, he won't let me do it. That boy gonna trip out when he see that. We grew up across the street from each other, so that's been oh, my yeah. literally across the street from each other. So. Wow, that's cool, so man. So he gonna trip out when he see this. He is gonna trip out. <laughs> All right, so it takes a minute and 30 seconds. Make sure you don't talk. Don't move your mouth side to side. While you doing this, I'm gonna get into some business, you feel me? All right, bite. Yo, listen, this is my smile fest of the day. Smiling is a universal signal Humans use around the world to express happiness, regardless of their culture, their language, or their nationality. If you never notice, no matter where you go in this world, whether, no matter if they rich, they poor, we smile, you know what we're trying to say. This is your smile fact of the day. Your boy Scotty ATL, man, I'm about to you by Dutch Master, not yet. Let's get into it, man, with my boy D1. Yeah! yeah. So yeah. on this journey for, for, you know, you finding God and you getting closer to God, mm -hmm. was it just you? Mm -hmm. was, or was there somebody that was like a, a, a buddy or a yeah. parent or yeah. was somebody like yeah, giving I, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I had, I had big homies. Yeah, okay. I had big homies. That's why I know the importance of OGs and big homies in life. Cause it wasn't just me. It was dudes who went to my school who were a little older than me in college. So clearly I looked up to them. They two, three, four years older than me. And they the ones telling me, like, man, look, come with us, man. Oh, what y'all doing? What, what y'all, we going to the club? No, we going to Bible study. And I'm mm. like, wait, what? Like, huh? Yeah, but because of who it was telling me this, I already looked up to him because I'm like, man, he fresh. He cool. I like the way he dressed. I like the way he, you know, carry himself. And this what y'all doing? So it's like, all right, I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna see what it's hitting for, you know what I mean? That's why as a rapper now, in the rap game, I know the importance of big homies and leadership and how, how crucial that is to the youngins that's coming up because they're looking up to the big homies. Like, right. man, whatever example y'all set, I wouldn't know. listen if nobody else said it, but if y'all said it, all right, I'm, I'm gonna listen to it, you yeah. heard me, because of who you are. So it wasn't just me, man. I gotta thank the, the brothers that, uh, that really made it seem uh, doable and made it seem like, oh, I'm messed up, I'm wretched, I'm I'm crooked, I'm you know confused. 
I'm not confident. And it was like, it's okay. God don't need you to be none of that stuff. He just needs you to submit. You heard me? Mm. And I was like, man, say less. That's hard, bro. Yeah, that's hard, Dang, bro. Dang, that's so big. That's what's up, boy. So, all right, switch gears a little bit. You, 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 create, you came up with your own curriculum, mm -hmm. right? And you are now a teacher professor. as well. Professor. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Professor. Yeah. Get it right. Get it yeah. right. Yeah. You're a professor at Tufts. Yes, sir. Right? Yeah. How... How was that experience like? Yeah. Walking on campus. Yeah, bro. You feel me? Like, walking on campus. Bro, this is how dope my life is, bro. This is how God got it set up. I get to walk on campus as Professor D1, right? They call me Professor Uno because that's my nickname, Uno. So I walk on campus as a professor. Meanwhile, I'm still a rapper who dropping music constantly and doing shows. So it'll be the type of stuff where, Scotty, I walk on campus. I'll go sit in my office, you heard me? Might go post something on Instagram or listen up some beats and maybe write something right quick. I got my studio in my office, too, where I record it. Then at I, the, at, the, at, at the, the university. school, at the university, you heard No, me? man. Yeah, hey, bro, yes, yes. So then I go in, I teach my course, you heard me? I teach my course. After I teach my course and everybody loved it, we just had a fire discussion. We might be talking about the Kendrick and Drake stuff. We might be talking about AI, like artificial intelligence inside of hip-hop. We might be talking about... Uh, what could happen to really change the direction hip hop is moving in. But after that, after class end, I might tell one of my students, huh, hold my phone right quick and record me. I want to do a reel right quick where I'm rapping one of my songs, but I'm just about to walk down the hallway. So I got one of my students recording my content for me, you heard me, I'm posting that. So I'm like being D1 and Professor Augustine all in, all in one, bro, and it don't feel like I got a code switch at all, bro. That's, that's super hard, That's a man. dream come true, bro. It is, man. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. What's the, what's the song that you recorded at, uh, the, at, the, at the university? Bro, my whole know? album that's finna drop. Loaded. Okay. The whole album. I recorded it in my office at the what? university. Nah. The whole album. Look, I got wow. a song called, I got a song, I got a song called All Glory to God featuring Project Pat. Right. I recorded that song in the office, hit Project Pat up, sent it to him, and he was feeling that mug. He summed me the verse back. And I'm in my office bumping D1 and Project Pat on the speakers, you know what I mean? In, wow. in the office, like, yeah, dog. Man, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. Oh Make some noise one time for D1. Wow. Like, what's up, man? Yeah. Okay, so Project Pat is, is my guy. Okay. I rock with Project Yeah, Pat. yeah. I, but, all right, it's, this is different now, because you got Project Pat to obviously do something that yeah. we don't know Project Pat to be from. Okay. What's, what do you feel like, coming from, from where you come from, what's the sauce in terms of Christianity and where people have to find a line in terms of the type of music they, they, they speak about or mm -hmm. they rap about? Because mm -hmm. Project so, Pat is so in, both, mm -hmm. he's in both worlds. Mm -hmm. Does that, do you rock with that? Do you not rock with that? How you feel about that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I rock with anybody that's trying to make forward progress in life. So your starting point is your starting point. We all got a starting point. But if somebody, whether they're moving five miles per hour or they're moving 55 miles per hour, if they're trying to move closer towards being a better version of themselves, I could work with that. Okay. Oh, that's deep. I, like I can it. work I like with it. that. So that's all it takes for me. It's about being authentic. That, that, that's all. Be authentic and, oh, you really, trying to, you really trying to progress? Bet. Fred O'Bang. That was my student, dog, when oh, I was a middle God. school teacher. Now, Fred O'Bang is on my album. And, of course, people might be like, well, Fred o, he rap about different stuff than you. Man, I know Fred o in a way that 99% of people don't. And I know that this man's heart is gold, just like your grill. You yeah. yeah. Like his heart It's about gold. the heart. Yeah. And You're it, not really following everything behind what they may have done, et cetera, et cetera. You really looking at the man's heart. What they say, every saint got a past, every sinner got a future. That's Ooh, a good line. come on now. That's, did you put that in there? <laughs> I need to. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. You know, that's the thing. While we on the topic of it, what, is, what does LOADED stand for? Yeah, so LOADED is an acronym. It stands for Life of a Disruptor Evolving Daily. Mm. Man, and that, come and on, that, boy. And that's the title of my album, Loaded. I'm so, I'm so come sick on, of him. Man. So, so don't, so don't, so don't think, you heard me? They're like, oh, look, uh, D1 trying to, D1. No, nah, but you know what's so real, bro? It's because I think this is so important. People get around you, and they feel like they have to be who you are. Mm. They have mm. to switch mm. their personality because you're, you're super positive. 
Okay. And you're bringing the light that mm -hmm. some people aren't necessarily trying to follow. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important what you're saying because a lot of people who may not be in the, in the world of Christianity or mm -hmm. church, mm -hmm. it's important for them to know that they don't have to be perfect. Right. I, I'm, I'm shocked that people be thinking that they got to be perfect. Like, who's perfect, Scotty? Who is perfect, bro? Nobody. Nobody's he, perfect. He who has not seen and catch the first stone. You feel me? <laughs> Nobody's but, perfect. But, I was gonna but ask do you, you ever feel that way? Do you feel like people try to switch up a little bit when they come around you? Uh, if they're trying to switch up to be a better version of who they were called to be, then that's a compliment. Fair. If I bring the best out of somebody. Right. So that ain't a bad thing at all. Like, oh, man, I'm trying to... You know, D, yeah, like, man, you make me want to be this, or you make me want to talk about some, because they know when I come around, no disrespect to what you got going on, brother, but I don't care about who you, uh, who you smashing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't care about, like, no disrespect to it, once again, I don't care about uh, the rims on your car and, and, and how much you blew in the strip club and all that stuff. Like, that's, that's for your other friends, maybe. Y'all could talk about that stuff. When I come around, it's like, oh. Like, oh, we got mental. a lot in common, but yeah. let's, let's talk about the stuff we got in common. Your you spirit, feel? your mental. What you was about to say? I was going to ask him, like, you said you, um, first, when you first started rapping and stuff like that in college, what, what you, was you always positive? You went in now talking the way you talking now? No, I, I don't want nobody to hear my first mixtape. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, That's a good question, though. Yeah, That's what I want to know. That's a great question. You, yeah. you didn't start off as who you are now. Nah, nah. When I first, when I first started rapping... I was definitely trying to be the light-skinned Lil Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> so my rap name wasn't even D1, it was Deezy. So I could be just like Weezy. Yeah, oh, yeah okay, like, okay. okay. Yeah, that's bro. a good fact, bro. I yeah. know. And then and then what happened was, what happened was, man, my mixtape started circulating around campus. Man, I came home for Christmas break. My mama walked up to me and she was like, Oh, I didn't know you rap. And she pulled a CD out of her purse. She said, my co-worker's son go to school with you. And yeah, he, he told his mama like, oh, David rapping now. And gave his mama the CD. His mama gave it to me. And when my mama had that CD up, and I knew what I was rapping about on there. That was, oh, that was the last time. That, that, was, that was it. That was it. Because I was yeah. like, I shouldn't have to be this ashamed of something that I love doing. I had fun making that mixtape. Right. But I shouldn't be like, dang, I had so much fun making it, but not at the woman, my queen who I love so much, then told me, uh, yeah, I listened to this. I shouldn't feel this shamed and this embarrassed. So I was right. like, something got to switch. I'm not going to stop rapping, but I could switch what I'm rapping about wow. to really be myself. I think I, I think I killed 45 people on that mixtape. Yeah. <laughs> right. In my lyrics, yeah. yeah that's I bet you all told, basketball that's players. Right. You know, my, first, my, first, my first music, bro, I was a sniper on the rooftop. You feel me? You feel I was Psycho Scotty. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. trying to tell you. Scotty? Yeah, oh, real man. talk. That was <laughs> No. No cow. No cow. <laughs> See, you know, I, I would, though. All right, so, all right, so I, I want to talk about something that's a, that's a little known, whatever. Mm -hmm. When you, when you, there's, every, everybody knows about this conversation you had with Rick Ross. Okay. I hope y'all know. Y'all know about it? That was a very important moment in hip-hop history. Explain it then. If you, yeah. If you, if you want to I went that. on Sway in the morning. I had uh, a new project that had just dropped, and when I went on Sway, Right before the interview, y'all, I had just heard Rick Ross uh, and Meek Mill, a new song they had put out together, right? Um, they was putting a collab album out. So I think the song was called Lyrical Easy, or it was called Shaq and Kobe, one mm -hmm. of them. I think it was called Shaq and Kobe. All right, so I had just heard it, and it's fresh on my mind, fresh in my spirit, because I was excited, like, oh, we getting some new Ross and some new Meek, bet. And when I pressed play, it shocked me, and I saw the music video, and it shocked me. Like, man, they really on here, like, just glorifying, just murdering cats, and I'm going to shoot you at the red light, and da-da-da, you know, it's up on site, and all this, talk about how much dope they moving. And that was on my mind that I was just like, yo, at what point in hip-hop, as an OG, and we talking about just Ross for right now, at what point, as somebody that's almost 50 years old, do we get to where we say, hey, you might have been living like that when you was younger, but you ain't doing that no more. So why are you still glorifying all that mm. violence and all that foolishness? You mm. heard me? Like, why, bro? And that, was, that song was fresh mm. in my spirit. So in the midst of the, like, I got adrenaline rushing right now. Like, I get excited uh, I when I'm it. having uh, dope convo. What you're so in the midst of the mm. convo with Sway, that just came out. And I was like, man, you could do better. You know what I'm saying? I was like, that's it. I was like, I love you too much to not be honest with you, brother. But Rick Ross, you can do better. And I said that. And the clip, you know, ended up going viral. And Rick Ross saw it. 
And his response was, well, I buy a lot of turkeys for people at Thanksgiving. <laughs> Okay. So he was like, "Look, don't you know? Hey, don't, 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 don't talk to me about what I could do. Da da da. I'm buying turkeys and pampers for people at Thanksgiving for the last 20 years. So that means you're feeding people one day, you're feeding their stomach, but the other 364 days, you're feeding their mind and their spirit poison with what you're putting out there. And mm. I'm just like, "What's up, man? Like, and." All he wanted to do was try to rib, you know, make fun. Oh, you, you look like a fake roster. Oh, you right. basket head. Oh, da, da, da. All right. And it's just through Instagram. So that's what happened. And what it did was it showed people that cats in hip hop don't be wanting no accountability. They just like, hey, I'm rich already. Let me do me. I dare somebody to tell me something about me. Like, how dare you? Meanwhile, what you're putting out there is music that is literally raising our community. Right. Everybody in the community don't have a two-parent household and a daddy that's going to be on top of them and a grandpa and a dope uh, baseball or basketball coach at the playground or whatever. So for a lot of people, and we know this, we can't act like we don't know. Hip-hop is raising people, pouring into people. So I don't look at the 19, 20-year-olds. I don't look at a Kodak Black or a Fred Bang or an NBA young boy okay. and be like, dang. From. I look at the people that's looking at the fact age. that he an OG, like you spoke about earlier, he's an OG. Yeah. But let me ask you this, though. If he would have responded differently, do you think you would have maybe took it a different way in terms of seeing the heart? If he would have said something more different, like, you know what, man? I see where you're coming from. But I make this music because blah, 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 blah. Yeah, at that point, we have an adult conversation. We have an uh, back and forth dialogue, and we can get somewhere, you know? Okay. Communication leads to unification. Okay. So yeah. when we're able to have that type of dialogue, that's powerful. But you could tell when somebody is deflecting. Okay. Yeah. That, that, what you're saying to me makes more sense. Because, see, I watched it, and I saw what was going on, and... To, I'm, and I'm being honest. And my first thought was, did you think he was going to change what he rapped about? You know, like, mm -hmm. was that, was that like, okay, maybe he'll change when you make that statement? Or did you think it was, I think that this will open up conversation mm. for people to change? Yeah. Bro, so the truth is, I didn't think about none of that because it wasn't premeditated. It was just a conversation. It was me on sway talking, you heard me? Right. Like literally just talking and me saying that, bro, I done said rappers' names throughout my whole career because I'm giving people praise for something dope or if I'm like, yo, this person here, that's messed up how takeoff got murdered, you know, da 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 right. or this. You're just that. being honest. Yeah, about I'm just being on. honest and I'm giving examples for the points that I'm making. Right. You know what I mean? So I didn't have this premeditated what it was gonna lead to. But I do know one thing, I teach about this in my course. The hip hop industry is made up of the three C's: creators, consumers, and commissioners. Commissioners are labels, media, right? Creators are artists, producers, right. consumers are fans. I do know that. In the 50th year of hip hop existing, the fact that we want to celebrate hip hop all year long, we need to have some difficult, honest conversations about certain things that are unhealthy about hip hop. That people not willing to have. There you go. And that's my thing. Like, so I am thankful that putting that out there got a lot of people talking and being like, yo, this bigger than D1 and Rick And I Ross. think it did, I think it did touch a, quite a few people in terms of, because I saw. Jim Jones ended up coming to the conversation and a few others. Mm -hmm. But I think that in general, it touched a lot of people to think about what they were writing mm -hmm. and what they were putting out. And I saw it. I saw it, bro. Yeah. And what they consuming. So as fans, fans got more power than all of us, yeah. the consumers. And that's the part nobody want to talk about. But we could go back and forth about what artists should do all day and what labels should fund. The reality, Scotty, is fans. They got more fans than artists and uh, commissioners. and commissioners combined. Right. So if when the fans get to the point to where they're like, you know what, I got the discipline to resist this delicious poison that y'all trying to feed us. It's delicious because right. them beats knocking, that 808 hitting. Right. You hear me? And they talking that talk on that, the metaphors banging all that. It's delicious, but it's poison. 
It just is. Like, it, 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 it's poison. I understand yeah. what you're saying. I mean, it go deeper than that. It get deeper than that. You know, we can go all the way back to biblical time when, you know. Come on. When, when Lucifer was the, what's the, what's the. The what? minister of music. Of music. The minister of music. He had, 30, he had 30% of the choir. Just like, he had 30% of his, of his people. It was the choir. Like, he was just talking about the fans. Yep. He got a percentage of yep. fans that just. Gonna leak, gonna follow yep, him. Following him. You know what I'm saying? Following him. And that's a lot of people. Thirty percent. One third of the, all the angels, yes. fallen angels. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was that's in heaven lot. at one time, and all the fallen angels along with Lucifer, mm -hmm. like music, music. I, 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 that's bro. It, it helps me to have a better understanding, I think, too, of just you as a person, because I think with some of the conversations that came out, it made it seem like you wanted people to be perfect, but hearing mm -hmm. you now and having this conversation. It helps me to understand that you're accepting people where they are at mm -hmm. in their life, mm -hmm. but you also want to show them a better way. Absolutely. Show them a better way. And also, there's a term that I hope everybody in here is familiar with. It's called willful ignorance. Mm. It's when you clearly know better. Dang. You right. clearly know better. Yeah. Like, yeah. But you're going to choose to not do better because of the financial gain that you're going to receive or because of the physical pleasure or the dopamine that you're going to receive. Mm. So, when, so the problem with the reward system in hip hop is we have gotten to the point where we celebrate people and we help them monetize the lowest level of who they really are. Dang. That's real. So we pay you handsomely, you heard me? Right. To make sure that you show us the most ignorant side of who you are the most uh, promiscuous side, if you're a woman, of who you are, we're going to pay you handsomely. We're going to reward you. And then if you last long enough in the game, we're going to call you a legend. You know what, though? I'm, I'm glad you <laughs> said that. Because, no, nah, this is real. Because I, I, I need to say this. There's, a, there's also a part of having music that is more positive and that and does us better, but it don't sound as good. Oh, and yeah. I think that's yeah. the level too that we gotta we gotta address that. We gotta work at that too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you know, no, 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 no knock because I listen to Christian music too. Mm -hmm. I listen to all types of music. Mm -hmm. But if maybe if there was better sounding music that was positive too, mm -hmm. more people would consume it. Maybe. I don't think so. Mm -mm. You don't think I so? Think, I, I think it's an uphill battle. It's an mm -hmm. uphill battle because uh, and I'm not saying that there aren't, because people are going to say, oh, right. man, my, take out my song. Right. And I'm not saying everybody's song's not jamming, but we, oh, yeah. we, we, we got to keep it real. Feel me? It's a lot of dope music out there, bro, at this, at this point. It's a lot of dope music. McDonald's ain't the only fast food that exists. You know what I'm saying? There, there's a whole bunch of other options that people have, and then people start to explore, damn, McDonald's might be pretty unhealthy for us. It's being proven. So let me look elsewhere for what I consume. The issue is people can't even get on the same page about is this type of hip hop uh, negative for our community or not. And it's hard to say that it's negative when it brings us so much pleasure. When mm. we like, damn, man, I, I, didn't, I didn't grew up listening to this, man. We have black parties. We go to the club and we turn up for four hours straight. Right. To murder music. You heard me? Right. But, I know it. And you can't yeah. tell people that that music is bad because they're like, I just had the time of my life right. to this same music. Right. right. So it's like, it's all good. So I try. So mm. one thing I've been doing is saying, all right, as an artist, let me create the music that's going to be an alternative to this, right? What but let me doing? show people I'm doing? not on some holier than thou stuff. That's why Fredo Bang on my album. That's why The Game was on my last album. That's why Project Pet is on my album. Thanks. That's why Raheem Devon is on my album. Like, that's that. But in addition to making music, I'm taking hip hop to another level to where I'm like, I'm going to use hip hop in a way that's going to reach the little, little kids. Man, I just wrote a children's book. You heard me? So, yeah. Yeah. So, so David found his slingshot. David found That's his slingshot. Just, just like I talked about, everybody got a slingshot. You Let know what I mean? In life, man. of course, man. So that mug rhymes. So when you when you read it, I wrote wow. that mug with a beat playing in the background. So that's why it's a hip hop children's book because it's telling the story of me in New Orleans as a kindergarten. I used to get bullied, right? This is dope, bro. Yeah, and the dude went from being my bully to being my best friend, bro. I've and the seen way, that happen. and the way, yeah, and the, and the way it happened is we found something that we had in common. 
and it just so happened to be hip hop. I don't want to give too much of the book away, Thanks. but dude went from being my bully to being my best friend, bro. And it's mm. showing this younger generation how to treat one another, how to respect one another, man. So David found this his is slingshot. Really dope, bro. Thank you, bro. Hey, man, right please now. make some noise, man. Please, please, please. please. This is really dope, bro. I, I, um, I go to a lot of schools and read, and I think that this is cool to have something that. Um, they can have in the, in the classrooms. It represents yeah. more of oh, what's man. going on in today's time in the culture and the people that's Bro. rocking the culture for, you know what I'm saying, right now. So Bro. this is dope, man. I, I love when man. them kids get to hear that. When I go to a school and I do a book reading or, man, I got people on Instagram that tag me every day. Like, I, I'm reading the book to my son and my daughter and they loving it so much and they reciting it because it's catchy because it all rhymes. So when you when you reading it, it's like, oh, these words getting stuck in my head because they feel like a song, you right. know? So that's on my website. I'm going to buy that's, one from you. That's man. on d1music.com. You got something I can, can I buy this? And you... Yeah, I got you. That's uh, the, uh, the uh, last, yeah. Right, D-E-E, the one. number one, music.com on, for everybody Stop else. Yeah. Stop playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's dope. This is super dope. Hey, look, man, it's going down. I'm going to go to my girl, Erica Dutchess, for a second. She got the word on the street. Erica, what's up? <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's your girl, comedian Erica Duchess, and we're here live on Edgewood, and today is Word on the Streets. So let's see what we got going on today. So, Miss Lady, can you tell me what question do you have for my boy D1? D1, my question is, based on the political climate right now, how do you feel about politics, and what advice can you offer other people pertaining to politics? Hey, D1, the people want to know, and that's Word on the Streets. Yeah. Well, just know that they both lying. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. How do you say so, that, though? Because the nature of politics is that you have to run on an agenda that you know you can't fully even deliver on. You feel me? Like, right. you are promising people something that you know it's going to be impossible to accomplish all this stuff if and when I get in office. But you got to sell the people on that hope that elect me and all this stuff is gonna happen. And you know in the back of your mind, that won't be true, right? right. So that's number one. Mm. Number two is, despite that, if we choose to live in America, man, so many people fought for our freedom to even be able to vote. Then who are we to be cocky to say, I ain't finna vote, man, forget all that. Well, even if you don't vote, <laughs> you're just gonna be the recipient of whoever people do choose to vote for. Right. So take part in the process is my thing. Like, of course we should vote, right? When it comes to who to vote for, yo, just know that if you're Christian, that don't mean you got to vote for uh, the Republican Party or you got to vote for the Democratic Party. If you're black, that don't mean you got to vote for the Democratic candidate or you got to vote for the Republican candidate. Man, first of all, I, I identify as independent at this point in life, right? Okay. Because I agree with some things that the Democrats be talking about and some things that the Republicans be talking about. Mm. But by me being independent, I don't have any blind loyalty to anybody. To so it's either like, party. Yeah, it's either party. Got you. I'm not voting based on a party, man. I'm voting right. based on my intelligence, my discernment, based on, okay, I'm going to hear y'all vote that. out, right? And then from yeah. there, hey, I'm going to pray to God like, God, allow me to make the wisest decision based on the info I've been provided with, right? And it's sad that politics is so polarizing right now that earlier this week, I was like, yo, I'm sorry, y'all. Like, I just, I, I can't vote for Donald Trump, me personally. Like, after seeing various things and, and, and stuff he be talking about, I lost 5,000 followers. You lie. By saying that. By saying, man, 5,000 followers, dog. For real? People telling me, man, you ain't, you ain't Christian if you ain't voting for Donald Trump. Uh, if, you, if you don't vote for Donald Trump, that I didn't mean, know he was representing the Christian community. <laughs> no, I'm he, not saying that he's that's not. That's the thing. No, no. You need he to be just, saying that just, because that's the whole thing is that there has been, the, bro, I love that God be having me right in the middle. Dog, I wake up every day this past week. I'm in New Orleans and with my daddy. My daddy, every day I wake up, my daddy saying, Donald Trump racist. Look what he said yesterday. Look what he said yesterday, right? right. Every day I wake up, my pop's saying that. <laughs> Meanwhile, I go on right. social media and everybody on social media is saying, D1 is uh, blindly loyal to black people and he not really Christian. D1 ain't really in the spirit. He not really, you know, in tune with what God wants because he said he not voting for, for this dude. Da, da, da. So it's sad, bro, when there's all these polarizing views and mm -hmm. in actuality, I'm just like, nah, somebody that's voting for Donald Trump, 
I still give you a big old bear hug, sit here and have lunch yeah, with you, chop it up. On. Somebody yeah. that's voting for Kamala Harris, cool. That don't mean we agree on everything. That don't mean we disagree on everything. Yeah. But we can all still exist that's how together. Be anyway. Yeah, disagree. bro. And, and that's the problem. So people got so triggered by me saying uh, that I wouldn't be voting for dude this go around. That, uh, you know, it showed me a lot that, oh, we got work to do. People, people need more emotional intelligence to where... The power to vote is something that you should be like, well, D1 ain't voting for him, but I want to vote for yeah, him. Yeah, so that's, your, that's your decision. Yeah. This is America, dog. This is where we at currently. You so, me? So. Everybody's so followers. Like, every, like just followers. And I'm then, the social media don't make it no better. You have actual followers. You yeah. know, we lead them by followers, looking at who got these men following. That's, how, that's where everybody into. That's the latest trend. That's, I can get so deep with this, but I know we don't got enough time for that. Yeah. But I feel you on all of that. But I understand with the kind of politics, I don't really be into that either. But right. I, I get it. I, I'm glad you broke that down. I needed to hear that. Yeah. I needed to hear that like that. I, there's I, a lot of things that I don't agree with with Democrats yep. that we allow. Mm -hmm. that I know it's not in, in alignment with, with my faith and my Your beliefs. Your spirituality. You know what I'm saying? So that's where a lot of things conflict me at, you know, yep. and then I can't be in agreement with this because of the human being he is. Yep, that, there you go. And, and, and me personally, I'm just going to say it. Why vote for somebody who you know has a statistical 0% chance of winning? Because some people be like, well, I'm just going to vote for Joe Blow out the Calio, you hear right, me? Right. And it's like, okay, you and 48 other people going to vote for right, the daddy, right, you hear right. me? And mm -hmm. I just don't feel that. So that's me, bro. I mean, that, that's my thoughts on it. And it, it won't make me hate anybody, regardless of who they vote for. But I have seen that it'll make people hate or disown me or feel like they can't rock with me no more. But my skin is thick, man. So whether it's Rick Ross, they got issues with me. Whether it's people that's voting for Trump, they got issues with me. I'm still immensely blessed. And God still put this smile on my face. Yeah! Peace out, Hey, man. I want to thank you for coming by live on Edgewood. Mm. This has been a super dope talk. Thank you for this this book, man. I'm gonna yes, share sir. this with my kids, man. Yes, sir. Some other people, man. You know Please, what I'm saying? Dog. David found his slingshot. Make sure y'all go out and check this out. Yeah. Buy it. It's on his website as well. Yes. Um, hey, make sure you follow us on Instagram, live mm -hmm. on Edgewood TV. Mm -hmm. Thanks to our sponsors, Dutch Master, Nyack. We in the building, man. This has been dope. Thank you, Erica Duchess. Yeah. 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 Make some noise. Make some noise. Make some noise. Make some noise. Make some noise, man. Oh, my God. Yeah. Be right, man. Thank y'all. I love y'all, man. Thank y'all. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah. What's up, y'all? This your girl, Erica Duchess, and I'm in the green room with Dutch Lee. Oh, Dutch. <laughs> oh, I see. Of course. Oh, I'm trying to go. Of course. <laughs> <laughs>